Welcome back to class. I hope you had a good week. Happy Easter. Um, today we're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn about Peter, or Judas's betrayal, Peter's denial, Jesus' trial, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So there's a lot to get in today. So hopefully I can squeeze it all in and you are able to enjoy the lesson and learn from it. So let's pray and then we'll jump into the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for all your blessings that you provide for us, Lord. We thank you so much for all the uh, for the safety that you provided for us in this time of illness. I pray, Lord, that you just please help us to remember, even though we're stuck at home, Lord, that we remember the true reason of Easter, Lord, which is the death and resurrection of you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you just help us to remember that and not uh, and not uh, solely uh, think on the things of the what the world wants us to believe Easter is. You are a great and mighty God, and we thank you so much for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's start with Judas. So we learned in our last lesson how Judas decided in his heart that he was going to pray the Lord Jesus. Now we're going to go over some scripture that shows him actually doing the action of, of betraying the Lord Jesus. Now, there's a lot of scripture for this lesson from um, the betrayal of, of Judas all the way up to the resurrection. It's a lot of scripture. It can be found in the Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We learned that a couple of lessons ago. Um, they witnessed this. They recorded it. So these are actual events that had happened. And every single book, it backs each other up. So it, it, God's word is pure and holy. You know, he knew what he was doing when he uh, inspired them to write what they witnessed. So, um, so Judas. Um, let's begin with Mark 14, verse 32 through 41. So if you have your Bibles, grab it. Oh, let me start my timer. Grab your Bibles while I'm getting my timer. And if you have your Bibles, open up your Bible to Mark 14, chapter 14, verse 32 through 41. Okay, my timer. So 32 through 41. It says, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and they said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I pray. And he taketh him, uh, taketh with him Peter and John, James and John, and began to be sore amazed, and to be very heavy. And said, uh, and saith, said, saith? And saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch. And he went forward a little, and fell on the ground, and prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Mm, let's go, oh, to 41, sorry. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they uh, what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And that's 41. Okay, so uh, what is going on here is after the Last Supper, after the feet washing, Jesus and the disciples go to the Garden of Gethsemane. So uh, Jesus took three disciples with him. He took for their names at Peter, James, and John. Okay, he took them with them um, to go pray. And when I go through hard times, and I'm sure that when you've gone through hard times, your family members, we hear about people asking prayer just to help them through different situations, to help uh, strengthen them, to know how to handle situations, know how to um, how to endure them. And this is what Jesus was doing. He was asking them, pray with me, help, help me through prayer to know how to go through this. And at, well, at a point, through that scripture that we read in Mark 14, 36, it says, And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Basically saying, if if this can be taken away from me, if I don't have to do it, Lord, I, that would be pretty good. But he said, nevertheless, not what I will, not what I want, 
but what thou will, what you want, Lord, I'll still do it. I'll do it for you, or God. Um, so we're in the garden. Jesus is praying. He's asking these three disciples with him, took him with him, uh, to help him pray and get through this situation. Uh, but they kept on falling asleep. You know, we've, I think we've all been guilty of, of that happening to us at one point, that we kind of get distracted or we're not uh, really focused in our prayer. And sometimes people fall asleep. And it's not, it happens, but it's, and it's not a good thing. Uh, we should do, do better. I mean, how bad would that be if I was talking to you and I'm just like, fall asleep. That would be super rude, right? Or if any of you have had a conversation with someone and you're all into it, and you're talking, talking, and then the other person starts going and talking, oh, hey, you over there, and they completely, like, forget about you and disregard anything you're saying. And, yeah, that's not nice. It's very rude. So that's, you know, basically how our behavior is when we fall asleep during prayer. It's so rude, so disrespectful, and we need to work really hard and focus on the Lord when we're praying because we're speaking to him. We have a main line up to the Lord Jesus to speak with him. We need to take it serious. And these disciples, they did not take it serious. They had the Lord Jesus physically there with them, and they weren't taking it serious. So the Lord just said, you know what? The third time, they'll just go back to sleep. The time is almost here. So in uh, Mark 14, 42 through 47, it says, Rise up, let us go, and lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas. One of the twelve, because he was one of the disciples. And with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief pri of, yeah, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him to verse 47. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. That's intense. And I always think too, like, that, because it's Peter who cuts off the ear. We know, I'll, I'll explain it later. The one who had his ear cut off, Jesus goes and he heals him. And he's like, oh, let me get that for you and puts it back and ta-da, you have your ear again. Like, I wonder if that man was like, you know what, maybe I went to go help capture Lord Jesus, and I got my ear cut off, and Jesus, who I went to go capture, healed me. Like, maybe I should go follow him. I always wonder that. You would think that he would do that. It's the right thing to do. So, um, here's my picture. So, the, um, Judas no longer put his trust in the Lord Jesus. He betrayed him. He um, he handed Jesus over, remember, for 30 pieces of silver, and which is kind of like $50. That's it. Like He felt that money was more important than the Lord Jesus. And it's crazy, too, because when, when he was there in the garden, okay, he used to have his trust in the Lord. He saw the miracles. He saw the love that the Lord Jesus had for the people, the compassion he had on them when he was feeding the the thousands of people, he saw him do great things on this earth. He followed him for three years during his ministry. I mean, you could see that the Lord Jesus was the Son of God. And at one point, he did believe that. But he let this sin overcome him in this temptation, and he chose, you know what? This is more important to me than the Lord Jesus. So, um, in, oh, in John 18, 10, let me get that to you, 18, 10, oh, it's right here. John 18, 10, it says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. The servant's name was Malchus, Malchus. So, Peter, you know, he, he means well, but sometimes... His good intentions get him in trouble. So, uh, his good intentions weren't pure intentions. So, um, Peter had good intentions. He told Jesus uh, at the Last Supper, uh, the, the Feast of the Passover, he told him, 
Lord, oh, I'll never, um, I'll, I'll never be offended by you. And then Jesus tells them, oh, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. In three times before the night is over, you're going to deny me three times. Well, he's like, oh, no, I, no, I'm not, I'm not. Well, he does. And that is found in John 18. Let me get it. John 18, uh, verse 14 through 18. Verse 14 through 18. It says, Now, Cephas was he which uh, gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. The disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the uh, palace of the high priest, like the court. But Peter stood at the door without, and went out, uh, and went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel, and that kept the door unto Peter, Art thou also one of uh, this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. Up to verse 18. And the servant and the officer stood there, who had made the fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. So, like I said, Peter had good intentions, but not pure intentions. Uh, he followed Jesus. He... And I, I wonder if it was to the point where he was like, no, I'm going to prove that I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be offended by the Lord. I wonder if, if that was what was his mindset. Because he knew that the Lord Jesus told him, yes, you are going to deny me. I wonder if he's like, no, I'm going to follow, I'm going to stick with him, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove him wrong. I wonder if he had that kind of mentality. He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow through and I'm not going to be offended. But he did it once. Already, you already denied the Lord Jesus. With the doorkeeper, uh, the woman that was standing at the door, keeping the door, maybe she was like, hey, you can't come in. Uh, like that, that's what I think of a, of a doorkeeper. Um, she was, the, I'm assuming she was the one who, who allowed people in and out. And uh, she's like, weren't you, weren't you one of those disciples? He's like, no, I'm not. So that was the first time, okay? Uh, that was in verse 17. Yes. The damsel kept the door unto Peter. Art not, art, sorry, it's too far. Art not thou also one of the man's disciples? And he said, I am not. So verse 17, that's the first time he denies the Lord Jesus. Then in verse 25, it says, And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said, Therefore unto him, Art thou one of his disciples? He denied it, and he says, I am not. That's the second time. So verse 17 is the first time. Verse 25, the second time. And in verse 26 and 27, we read, One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Like, how crazy is that? Peter cut off, remember, Peter cut off one of the men's ears that was uh, with the high priest to come and take Jesus. He cut the ear off. Jesus put the ear back on. And so that had happened. There was a lot of people around. So now that, that Peter is following closely uh, to where the Lord is at, one of the people standing around the fire with Peter, because he's trying to warm himself up, trying to stay close enough to the Lord, he was standing there, and it says the kinsman of the one, how does it say it? Uh, being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off. So the guy, he was related to the guy that Peter cut his ear off. So the poor guy that had his ear sliced off, he was related to him. He's like, hey, weren't you there? And then finally, Peter says, no, it wasn't me. I wasn't there. In verse 27, it says, Peter then denied again. And immediately the cock crew, the, it, that's what the Lord Jesus told him. He says, three times you're going to deny me before the cock crows. Okay? You know, cock a doo doo, -doo. Yeah. He, before that happens, you're, you're going to deny me three times. And, and I can't imagine how much guilt and, 
and the pain Peter must have felt. Like I said, he had good intentions, but his intentions weren't pure. I don't. I I have a feeling he was like, I I wanna I wanna make sure I do this, and he was trying so hard not to not to do what the Lord had done. But the Lord Jesus said it is gonna happen. So uh, we see that Peter. Oh, so. We, we have seen that Peter denied the Lord Jesus. He didn't know him. Three times they asked him. He said he didn't know him. Uh, we learned that Judas had uh, betrayed Jesus. Now we are going on to... Can you see my timer? Oh, I don't have much time. Now we come to the trial. Now, I should have done this one side lower than the other because um, this right here equals like fair and equal justice. Um, if it was one side that was heavier than the other, then it would be not equal, not good, okay? Um, so the priests, they questioned the Lord Jesus. They they knew and they heard what Jesus had preached in the, the synagogue. Jesus even straight out told them, listen, you heard me. You heard me it, teaching. Ask the people what I had taught them. You heard me, they heard me, ask them. And he's saying, they're like, what you know? What do you have to say for yourselves? You know, we have people saying that you're saying this, this, and this. Well, um, ask them, ask those people. Where are your witnesses? Where's your proof? And a soldier hits the Lord Jesus. Like, yikes! How? I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine having to to stand before God and say, Yeah, I I struck your son. No, thank you. So. Um, Jesus called them out and said, you know, hey, wh those people who spoke evil of me, where are they? Show them to me. And um, the priests, they're like, you know what? We can't handle this. We can't, we can't take care of this right now. We have to worry about the Passover, and we need to do all these spiritual things, and we can't defile our hands and get dirty, get our hands dirty, because that's what they're trying to do. They're, try they're getting their hands dirty trying to get rid of the Lord Jesus, who they knew was the Lord, Son of God. You gotta hurry. So, um, they sent him to Pilate. And Pilate was the governor. So this story is found in John chapter 18, verse 28 through 40, and then chapter 19, it goes on to the next chapter, 19, 1 through 16. Now, Pilate, point, point to his Pilate, he, he being the governor, not a man of God, he could see that something wasn't right. He could see that he was, that these priests, that they were accusing the Lord Jesus for something he didn't do. And when you read this, and there is a lot to it, I mean, there's a lot of scripture. Um, Pilate asked Jesus, hey, aren't you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, you said it. You say so. You know? Jesus knew what was coming. Jesus knew what he had to do. He knew that he was going to have to be sacrificed in order to save these people who were so upset with him for telling them the truth. And so Pilate, he tries to handle the situation. He says, you know what? You know, you haven't, this, this, this man hasn't done anything wrong. Let me ask the people what he shouldn't have done. Maybe he was thinking, you know what? These people were welcoming Jesus last week with their palms and singing praised him, saying how great he was, and maybe they'll, re they'll release him from this, this, um, what is the word? Maybe they'll release him from this mm, judgment that these priests want on him. Well, that was not the case. And remember I had said, let's see how much these people really and truly love the Lord. Because they were cheering for him when he came into Jerusalem. Now, the tables have turned. So, um, in, let me get the verse. Just a few days ago, they were saying how much they loved Jesus and how great he was when he came into Jerusalem. And now they're saying crucify him. They're yelling. They're like a, a angry mob. 
It's just a big, huge crowd of people just angry, and they're saying, crucify him. And Pilate tells them, if you read within it, it says, that he's like, hey, I'm washing my hands of this. You guys are going to kill an innocent man here. My hands are free. You know, I, I'm, it's, this is not my fault. You guys are choosing this. So they release this prisoner, Barabbas, out instead of the Lord Jesus. And Pilate, he knows. He knows what, what, what that was wrong. But he wasn't able to convince the people. He tells them, this is an innocent man, and you're choosing Barabbas? And they said, we want him. We, we want Jesus dead. The story of the crucifixion is found, in, like I said, in all four Gospels, but this one is pulled out from Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 through 66. Now, the soldiers had badly, badly beaten uh, the Lord Jesus. They stripped him of his clothes. They put on this robe uh, like, like to mock him as being king, and they made a crown of thorns. Now, the other day I was pulling weeds in my backyard, and I poked my finger with a small little thorn, and oh my goodness, it hurt for like three days. It hurt so bad. And, I'm, and I was thinking like, oh my goodness, I can't even 